Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining with the Port Oxbury Veterans Memorial Park Society for the unveiling of our statues in the park today. The society was formed three years ago, approximately, after reading an article from Veterans Affairs that appeared in the Legion magazine stating that they had conducted a survey of cenotaphs across the country and found that many of them were in a state of disrepair. They had recommended that any non-profit, non-affiliated group take over the responsibility of repairing and enhancing the grounds uh, around the cenotaphs. These groups would be eligible for some grants from Veterans Affairs. After reading the article, Belmont Shannon, a very active Legion member for years, as president and as a zone commander, fully realized the importance of getting our cenotaph grounds improved and enhanced. <coughs> to date, we planted 16 native trees in the, in the park It'll be a few years before you'll see the full results of those trees. 26 flowering brushes that should be in bloom this year. We built a 60 by 15 foot flower bed, which is right behind us, with 2,500 red and white tulips. The red and white tulips, of course, represent the Canadian flag. Uh, we added more memorial benches to the park, built a rock garden around the east side of the park and that will eliminate any erosion of the grounds there. <coughs> we installed the six flagpoles. The six the flags that are up there, they're in the order that they, those provinces joined Confederation. The fifth flag is the UN flag. Since 1958, all peace, peacekeepers served under the UN flag, and 129 of those peacekeepers gave their life in the service of peace. The last flag is the NATO flag, and since 1946, when the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was put into place, all Canadians who served not only under the Canadian flag, but they served under the NATO flag in places like Korea, where 350 lost their lives, and uh, in uh, Afghanistan, where 158 lost their lives. Before the rededication of the park later on this summer, there's still work that needs to be done. First of all, we're going to install panels on the grounds here someplace of the veterans from around the area. Uh, the veterans of Port Hawkesbury, their names go on the regular cenotaph behind me. This will be something that 25 or 50 years down the road, people can come here with their children and say, look, the, there's the names of your grandfather or great-grandfather that served for the peace that we enjoy today. We want to install lighting at this site, and maybe Nova Scotia Power will install one of those new illuminating lights that are so cheap on power. Just a hint, I guess. Uh, the school children have done up poems about our history, with poems written in English, French, Mi'kmaq, and Gaelic, and they will be on display here in the park. And of course, as the summer comes along, we have to complete our landscaping. We'd like to do sodding, but it all depends on the funds we have available, whether we do the sodding or we have to receive it. There's been a lot of hard work and at times frustrating work to get to this stage. But the support we've received from business, industry, schools, the college, and individuals has made it all worthwhile. Without their help and your help, this could not be done. We have four speakers who want to say a few words later on, but before I introduce them, there's something that I want to say. 
on behalf of all veterans who have served, are serving, and will continue to serve. I want to thank our Secretary Treasurer, Bill McIntyre, for her 110% effort. Without your help, none of this would be accomplished. If the province is ever looking for a, a, an accomplished Nova Scotian to award a prize for the year or Nova Scotian of the year, Bell, you'd get our first choice. There's no doubt about it. Without your help, I'd be standing the same with you people here and we'd never have got this work done. So, Bell, on behalf of all veterans, thank you very much. Where's she at? Hiding over there in the background. Get the tears in your eyes, no? <coughs> I want to introduce uh, uh, Brenda, the, the deputy mayor, to say a few words. Where are you at, Brenda? <laughs> Honored guests, welcome and thank you for being here to share the special day as we unveil an important addition to our existing cenotaphs in our Portoxbury Veterans Memorial Park. Some of you may remember the reconstruction of the Cenotaphs and that they were moved from their original location at the Old Town Hall on Granville Street to this present location in 1976. Since that time, many groups and individuals have been involved in the improvement of our memorial park as a testament of their sacred duty to remember and honour our veterans and to the brave women and men in uniform who have so self selflessly served Canada. I'd like to uh, also share a little bit more background. Um, upgrades to the Memorial Park, of course, happened about three years ago, and part of that process included a uh, college instructor from NSCC, Wadi Long, uh, and his students from the Natural Resource Environmental Technology course. They came and they planted uh, trees and shrubs and helped with a rock garden. And these students planted a thousand tulips in the summer of 2011. And, a, and of course, these projects were made possible by many volunteers from the community, including Mr. Long's two sons, Max and Jude, who spent a lot of their summer working on these Memorial Park projects. Subsequently, the idea for the Memorial Park statues became a true labor of love for many dedicated community leaders. It is my great honor to thank the members of the Port Hawkesbury Veterans Memorial Park Society, namely Roddy McIsaac, Jim George, Jim Shannon, World War II veteran Stuart McDonald, Belle McIntyre, Wadi Long, and a very special member who passed away recently, Roxy McIsaac. Today we celebrate because of your insight, hard work, and dedication to make this project a reality. On behalf of the town of Port Hawkesbury, I'd also like to thank our NSCC students who have worked in the Memorial Park each year. I congratulate Principal Tom Gunn, Academic Chair Peter McLean, and again Instructor Wadi Long for your creativity in bridging the straight area, NSCC, with the town of Port Oxbury in such meaningful ways. We look forward to partnering in similar projects in the future. I'd also like to extend a huge thank you to our wonderful and extremely giving community for stepping up and volunteering time, resources, money, materials, and support, without which none of this would have been possible. Additionally, gratitude is also extended to the federal and provincial government, <coughs> ECBC, the town of Port Oxbury, for their support in this wonderful grassroots initiative. These amazing statues not only represent the unknown soldier, it is my hope that these statues will inspire a renewed sense of remembrance and pride in our community. That they will demonstrate that we honor our local heroes and ultimately that they will stand as a powerful reminder of the sacrifices that generations of Canadians have made for the peace and freedom we enjoy today. I can't help but be reminded of a poem written by Lawrence Binion called The Fallen. Part of the poem goes like this. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. 
They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. All the going at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. We will remember them. If we could all take a moment of silence in memory of the unknown soldier. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now call on uh, Jim Boudreau, MLA for guys for a few words. Uh, thank you, Roddy. Uh, first of all, uh, honored veterans, Legion members, and uh, guests. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here today and uh, to participate in what I see is, or what I've called a sort of treasure for the straight area. Um, this monument is, as you will see, one of a kind, and uh, it, it should be a source of great uh, pride and great pleasure to all the folks that uh, have participated in, uh, in making this a reality. Uh, as Roddy pointed out, Bell McIntyre is probably one of the most persistent uh, individuals that uh, I've come across in running my office in the last couple of years. Um, and Roddy rightly pointed out that Bell, Bell's uh, work on this project was certainly instrumental in getting this done. But that's not to say or to minimize the efforts of each and every one of the uh, folks on this uh, committee. Each one of the folks in this committee recognize and appreciate Bell's efforts. But I too want to recognize and tell you I appreciate your efforts on behalf of all the veterans in this area and in this region. Um, as a Legion member and uh, a, a person who had uh, experienced a, a loss in the Second World War, I understand very much uh, the importance of, uh, of remembering. This is another act of remembrance for this, this area, this, this region, and the people, the volunteers, and all the folks that have been, uh, that are responsible for this are to be certainly committed. With that, I'll conclude my marks and uh, congratulate. I want to congratulate each and every one of you, and God bless each and every one of you for coming out here today on behalf of the veterans. That's what we're here for today. Thank you. Um, but now I want to introduce Sheila Pelly, who is going to say a few words on behalf of the African Nova Scotia veterans. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, veterans and honored guests. I am very grateful to have been invited to attend such an honorable event here today on behalf of the council and the residents of the municipality of Guysburg and the African Nova Scotian communities of Guysburg County. In particular, I wish to acknowledge the tremendous contributions and sacrifice that many members of our great country and indeed the members of the African Nova Scotian communities have made and continue to make to the Canadian forces. The monument will be unveiled here today will most certainly act as a striking reminder for future generations of those veterans who give their lives and has vainly served and can continue to do so today in the name of our freedom. Again, on behalf of the municipality of Geisra and the African Nova Scotian communities, which I represent, I wish to thank you for the opportunity and congratulate the many volunteers and groups who have worked on this memorial. I thank you. Sheila, call on Jim George to unveil the cross. The cross is at the, the replica grave of the unknown soldier with the same inscriptions that you would find in the at the one at the National Center Death in Ottawa. Of course, this is just a replica. And as you realize, those people who watch the Remembrance Day service in Ottawa, when the service is finished, most of the people 
who then take their poppies and put it on the grave of the unknown soldier. We hope they'll do the same thing here. Now I'll call on uh, Belle McIntyre and her grandson, I think it's Cold and Luke, to unveil the statue of the nurse. Okay, now I'll call on uh, Jim Shannon, uh, Stuart McDonald, and Sheila Pelly. Sheila, will you get them a hand on unveiling the uh, Waddy Long is over there with them? We have Navy, Army, Air Force, Merchant Marine. And being Cape Bretoners, it wouldn't be right if we didn't have a Cape Breton Islander on there. On the back of the statue are the same inscriptions that you will find on the uh, Canadian War Cemeteries overseas. We hope you like it. There's no discrimination to race, color, or creed. We're all the same color, we all do the same thing. This is, this is a statue here, and he's holding a letter from home. He looks like a World War II veteran. And here's the Navy guy, the Navy veteran. He's holding a mailbag with the letters from home. 